Hey guys, it's me again, and uh, I'm bringing you guys a brand new review. This review is going to be pretty cool because I'm actually going to be reviewing three different things in one video. So this is my first aircraft review, my first uh, Polish vehicle review, and my first Kobe review. Now, this is not a Lego model. This is a Kobe model. And for those who don't know, I should probably explain to you why I bought a Kobe model. So, Kobe is a uh, brick building company. And before you jump to the conclusion that they are a Chinese bootleg version of Lego, they're not. They're actually a Polish company. And uh, they're, well, similar to Lego. They're kind of like mega constructs. They make, you know, they are, of course, inspired by Lego, but they don't copy Lego's uh, properties. And, uh, I mean, for instance, Poland, uh, Kobe makes their own pieces. So they have their own set of really cool pieces, for example, the propeller and the wings and stuff like that. That's all original pieces created by Kobe. Um, but the actual, and not only that, the actual properties themselves, they don't just copy Lego pro Lego properties like Star Wars or, you know, they don't have a, you know, they don't, they don't copy Star Wars or Marvel. They have their own line of, you know, stuff like that. And they're not a bad, they're the, and they're not crappy Chinese bricks either. They're really high quality bricks and very nicely made so they're a nice established company and the reason I bought a model from them is because Kobe I actually recent I had discovered them a little while ago I saw they were making some world of tanks models and I thought well that's kind of cool you know they're making some historical quote unquote well historically based vehicles you know but I didn't really have any interest in purchasing them until I saw that they had their own World War II range and I thought well that's pretty awesome uh, and then I saw they had aircraft and they were doing um, stuff like well, this, you know, very underrated, uh, obscure World War II vehicles. So I went, okay, I might have to check these guys out. So I went ahead and bought this model. And I have to say, I'm very impressed by the quality of these models. I had this model for um, a couple of weeks now. Uh, actually, for almost a month. And it's getting a little dusty, as you can see. It's been sitting on my shelf for a while. But it's a really cool model. So, I suppose we should talk about the actual plane itself before we talk about the model. So, the Polish uh, Karash was a, um... Oh yeah, I forgot to name, <laughs> to actually say what this aircraft is called. This is a PZL P-23. No, 23, sorry. PZL-23 uh, Karash. So, the Polish aircraft, uh, this is a light bomber. And it was used, um, in the 30s. And as well as that, it was used in the very, in the, in the early months of World War II. Uh, the Polish used these a lot against Panzer divisions, mostly. And, uh, of course, they, they really, this thing only really saw service for one month in the Polish military. Uh, because, of course, as you know, Poland was defeated really early on in the war. And they were the really, you know, they fell in a month or so. So, this did not see too much combat on the Polish armed forces. Uh, but it was a light bomber and it had a crew of three guys. And uh, they would just basically, you know, try to aid the Polish army by bombing, you know, Panzer divisions and whatnot. Um, and afterwards, the Luftwaffe captured a few of these planes and used it. Uh, and they used them, you know, across World War II. And it's a very iconic plane for sure, I think. For the Polish, at least. Of course, it's, a very, it's not a very recognizable plane. But I guess for Polish uh, army, for the Polish history in World War II, it is a pretty cool plane. So, let's talk about the actual model itself. Now... I have to say I'm very impressed by the quality of these bricks. I think this is fantastic quality. Um, they are basically, they feel exactly like Lego bricks. I mean, there's not that much of a difference, really. So, yeah. Let's talk about some of the cool features of this model. And then we can, you know, really get a closer look at it. So, before we take a look at the plane, let's actually take a look at the Kobe minifigures. Now, what do we think about them? Well, I definitely think it's interesting and commendable on Kobe that they actually went ahead and made their own minifig designs and just straight up copy the Lego minifigure. But I'm not really a big fan of these. I think they look a bit uh, silly, in my opinion. I'm not really a big fan of the proportions. Although I will look at these objectively. Um, I do really... The, they're made out of high-quality bricks. They're, the articulation is, well, the same as Lego. You know, the head turns side to side, the arms go up and down, the wrists turn. Actually, this thing has waist movement, so it's one more articulation point than Lego. And the legs bend back and, no, yeah, back and forth. Kind of remind me of the old Mega Bloks figures, like the very old ones. Um, yeah, I kind of remind me of that. 
The printing quality though on them is very nice. It's not uh, bad printing or anything. It's, you know, it's scratching my finger through it and uh, yeah, the print's still there. It's, uh, it's still, uh, you know, it's not rubbing off. So they're made out of high, they're printed high quality, which is cool. Now, if you're looking for a scale uh, with a Lego figure, I made up my own kind of mock-up pilot figure just to show you. They're basically the same size, although a little bit shorter. Just a little bit. But not by that much. They're basically the same size. So that, there's your scale. So those are the uh, pilots. And now we're actually going to take a look at the um, display stand for this thing. So one thing I love about Kobe is that they actually have display stands for their aircraft. Reminding me a lot of model aircraft. So the display stand is actually quite simplistic. It's a brick built one so you have to put it together. Uh, it's got the little plaque there. It's printed which is cool. It's not a sticker so that's nice. And uh, the plane just goes in there like that. So there's that. Now one thing I would like to talk about the model which I don't really normally do. I actually started doing this recently. I'm going to talk about the instructions. Now unfortunately I can't find the instructions for this thing. The basic, you know, the original instructions for it. I do have another example though. For another model. So here's the instructions of the, the Heinkel plane there, as you can see. If I just move this out of the way here, I can show you. And I, but this is really just so you can see how the instructions are laid out. And this is actually something I think Kobe does better than Lego because I really like how they do their instructions because they color in what steps you are doing and what steps you've already the steps you've already done, they color in like a white color, like a bluish white. And the steps that you are doing, they color in well, the the normal colors of the bricks. And I think that helps aid in building the model quite a lot because I do f I have I do find that sometimes with Lego it can give it a bit it can be a bit confusing on to know which step you're doing um, I wish I had the instructions for this thing I don't have them I I, I, I can't find them I have lo I have lost I have to find them later but I just wanted to give you an example of the by using the Heinkel instruction which is another model I have so let's finally talk about this plane now first of all it is a fairly large aircraft. Um, here it is next to a figure. You can see it is quite big. So I'm using the Lego figure because it's a quite universal thing. But if you're curious, here it is next to the regular Kobe figures, um, which are the same size. So it is a quite large plane, actually. That being said, however, it's still a lightweight, it's still a light bomber. But it's quite a cool plane. I'll just give you kind of a 360 view of it. I quite like it. Um, excuse me for the background noise. Um, it's kind of a busy day here at home. But I had to record this review because I didn't really have any other days available. Uh, I'll talk about that at the end of the video. But let's talk about the actual features of the plane. So first of all, here's the propeller, which is really cool. Um, and of course, it spins really nicely. Um, I quite like these Kobe propellers because they're made out of really light plastic. And what's, I mean, lightweight, but not fragile plastic like you can bet them as you can see. They're not breaking. What is really cool about these models, though, is that when you hold them up in your hand and you walk them around at moderate speed, the propeller starts spinning because it starts catching wind, which is really cool. So, you know, adds to the to the playability of the model. Um, you know, so you don't have to constantly keep flicking the propeller. You know, the wind will do it for you. So here's the cockpit, um, and it's pr pretty cool. Got a little rubber antenna there. If I just remove it, and you can see inside, uh, I don't know how I'm going to do this uh, here. I'll pick up the camera. You can see the seats in there. You can see a little lever in there, and the figures will fit in there nicely. Um, you know, they, they fit in there no problem. So that's cool. And you just slide that in it's quite nicely. Um, the wings, here are the wings. Um, pretty nice. Now, one thing I really love about the Kobe is that, at least with their planes, and not just their planes, Kobe. There's a lot of printed pieces on Kobe models, so there's almost no stickers. They only have stickers for a few of their aircrafts, but this is not one of them. This is printed, so every detail you see on this plane is printed. There's not a single sticker, so this is printed. This is printed back here. These are printed, and the tail's printed. You just It's insane, the amount of printing that they, got, that they have on these models is crazy. I mean, it's really cool. I'm very happy. It's just really nice. I think, of course, stickers. Sometimes you have to rely on stickers if you're putting it over, you know, overlap. If the stickers has to overlap over, a, you know, a, a group of bricks, then of course you, you you can't really decal that. But you can't really, uh, yeah, you can't uh, print that. But with, I I think in these kind of situations where they can fit in one brick, I think it should really try, you know, to print on them. 
And I think that's something, again, I think Kobe does better than Lego. A lot of the parts in this are printed, so you don't have to put in these dreaded stickers. <laughs> so, yeah. Here's the back of the plane. Here's the rear machine gun. It can pivot up and down, and it can turn a little bit. That's the side. The magazine, actually, is removable. So, that's kind of cool, I guess. And the figure can uh, stand up in there. I don't think he can sit down. Um, so, yeah. There's the tail. Pretty nice. One thing I also really like about the wings, actually, I forgot to show you. It's got working... Uh, I want to say these are flaps, but I think they're actually called ailerons. I think the flaps should be in here. I'm not, I'm not a plane expert, so I don't know, but... I believe these are not, I believe these are alien rods, but I could be wrong, so. But they do go up and down, which is a really cool feature. Nice amount of detail in there. Taking a look at the bottom of the aircraft, we've got a little MG here. This is actually where the third guy would be sitting. Now, the, they only give you two figures, but there would be a third guy down here uh, in this machine gun. The machine gun can pivot up and down. And on the bottom there, you can see the bombs of the plane. So there's the bombs. Pretty cool. Um, very nice. And uh, there you go. There's a landing gear, which is quite nice. The plane rolls really, really beautifully. You know, not even a single problem there. You know, just really cool. Now, if I do have to say, um, yeah, there's now there's a really cool um, look to this plane. I will say that. Like to me, this plane looks really cool. And in many ways, this could be, I guess, considered the Polish version of the, the Stuka. Not really, though. I mean, the Stuka is a dive bomber. This is a light bomber. You know, it does. it's not a dive bomber, but I guess in some ways it could be viewed as that because of the rear gunner and the bombs and stuff like that. I don't know. It's not really a dive bomber, but still. Um, it's quite cool. And, uh, yeah, there you go. That's really all the features of this thing. All right, so the fragility of this model. This model is very sturdy. These bricks show that. If I, I can hold this thing up by up to the wing, I can hold this thing up by the wings, I can hold it up by the tail even, and it stays together. The tail is a bit fragile though, because it slides in like that, but the, I mean the actual like, where the elevators of the plane are over here, you can hold it up and it, you know, stays together just fine. So I think fragility, this thing is great. It does not come apart easily. And it's a really cool plane because of that. Now, just to show you what this plane looks like on its display stand, now I'm going to have to kind of put up this camera up in an awkward angle. Oh, no, never mind. There you go. So, if we just put it way back in there. You can see the plane is on the display stand. Now, one thing I don't really like about the Kobe display stands is they're very wobbly, um, as you can see here. I mean, it's like a bobblehead, really. It's really, they're really wobbly. I mean, honestly, the slightest breeze and this, <laughs> these things start shaking. Which kind of sucks. I mean, I wish they were a little bit reinforced. A little bit more reinforced. But honestly, not that big of a deal. Um, in the end, it's just a minor complaint. Um, so, there you go. Anyways, we're going to move on to the size comparison and the final verdict. Now, the size comparison is going to be a lot more because I don't really have that many things to compare it with. Um, well, at least not at hand in the moment. But I do have... I'll bring in last re the last reviews. Uh, vehicle, which is the Stewart tank from CB. You can kind of see the the scale of it, I guess. I mean, it's kind of weird comparing a plane to a tank, but you can kind of see the the size difference there. Um, if I bring in a proper plane, however, here it is next to the German, the Brickmania um, Messerschmitt. You can see that the... Okay, this is going to be really hard to show because these planes are kind of big and I don't have that much space. If I have the camera backwards, you can kind of see the the wingspan there, like that. Um, an overhead view, I guess. You can kind of see the uh, the cope, the um, the PZL is a little bit bigger than the Britannia fighter there. <laughs> bit of an awkward size comparison there, but I just I don't have that much space, unfortunately. I'll see if I can get a better one. But anyways, that's beside the point. So my final verdict on this thing is, um, I think it's an incredible model. I, I really like Kobe and their models because they're a very cheap solution to Brick Mania and stuff like that. Now, I think that their aircrafts are really cool. And I think it's a fantastic model on a really, in my opinion, under, uh, under, underrated plane of World War II, very obscure. And I think it's cool that they're shedding light into this plane by making this model. I think it's a fantastic model pretty accurate to the plane. Um, 
nice details and nice playability. The only thing I real I really don't have any complaints. Honestly, there's nothing really much wrong with this at all. The only really com complaint I can kind of give it is that the display stand is a little wobbly, but that's just, just this plane. That's pretty much every Kobe plane that comes with a display stand. But I think this is a great representation on a very cool plane that is uh, pretty underappreciated in my opinion. Um, figures are kind of weird, but whatever, it's fine. The um, actual, I think the model is great. And Kobe themselves are great. I think that, honestly, Kobe's a really price effect cost effective you know way of getting um models because unlike uh, brickmania because brickmania has to purchase all the parts from lego uh, to make their models so it caught their models end up costing a lot more but kobe they're not purchasing parts from anybody they're actually making their own pieces at their own factories so it definitely reduces the price of this model considerably um, this thing costs around i don't really remember i think it's around the 30 five euro mark which is really cheap and i've seen a lot of people you know use kobe models instead of um you know proper lego models you know for their world or two collections that i could totally see why now a few kobe models um especially like their medium tanks and their light tanks are a bit too big in my opinion so i don't really like those but the aircraft in my opinion and the heavy tanks are perfect so there you go that is the review of the kobe pzl 23b karash really cool plane very happy with it um and yeah i can definitely say i'm gonna pick up more kobe models in the future so i hope you guys like this review thank you guys for watching and uh yeah i kind of had to do this review in a bit of a rush because uh, actually tomorrow i'm going on a trip to uh, germany so i didn't really have too much time to record a video and i figured well i'm not gonna leave you guys hanging so i'm gonna uh record a, a quick review for you guys uh, hopefully this hasn't been too rudimentary too um bad um, and I hope you guys can still enjoy the review. So, anyways, I hope you guys like this video. Thank you guys for watching. Please subscribe, guys, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Bye bye.